Would you stand with me? I'm just going to say a few words before we dismiss this morning. We're going to read from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. It's in your bulletin and insert if you don't have your Bible with you, or you can turn to it, or turn your phone on and look at it, however you get there. That's not it. You can turn. I don't have slides this morning. All right. This is salt and light. Verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. You may be seated. God bless the reading of his word. You see, verse 13 and verse 14 start with the word you. And I wonder, well, who the you is? And the you is, well, Jesus is the light of the world, right? If you ask who's the light of the world, well, it's Jesus. But wait, Jesus is the one talking here, so who's the you? Hmm. Well, the you. The you. Well, it must be the followers of Christ that's the you. And so, for, if you consider yourself a follower of Christ, he's saying you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. And sometimes I hear that and it's speaking to me and, and I just kind of I just kind of turn around and go, who, who are you talking to? Yeah. Who is that? You look in the mirror. You're the light, light of the world. Really? Oh. Here's the thing, and I want to leave this thought with you as you leave this morning. Guys, here it is. Sometimes we don't feel like the salt, and sometimes we don't feel like the light. Sometimes we're just down. Sometimes there's darkness in our lives. Sometimes bad stuff's happening that's making it really hard. Do you remember a week or two ago? It, 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 it seemed like it went day after day after day, and the sun never came out. You remember that? It started to get to me. It's like, when am I going to see the sun? And sometimes in our life, it's just that way. It just is. You get, a, you get a hard diagnosis. You didn't want to hear that. A good friend of yours turns and goes the wrong way, or a loved one and a family member. It's hard sometimes. Or we lose a, a close loved one in death. But might I suggest this to us this morning? How we handle the hard times, how we can live through the hard times, actually does give us a great chance and opportunity to be salt and light in this world. You see, even though I may be crying, and even though I may be hurting at times, there is something deep within me that's an assurance and a hope. And I'm telling you, that witnesses to the people around us. You may not have felt like getting up and coming to church this morning, but here you are. And you may not know it, but you sitting there, if it does nothing else, encourages me. I imagine we encourage the men who sang, you coming and showing up. Salt and light. We are people who even in a hard time, a struggling time, we allow faith to overcome fear. I will not live my life in fear. I will live my life in faith. And other people see that and go, where is that coming from? Oh, let me tell you where that's coming from. The Holy Spirit lives in me. God is in me. God's helping me. And perhaps we're down and we're out because we're, we're, not, in a, we're not in a good place in a relationship some, with somebody. And there's just been a... a, a a breaking apart of something that's, and it's broken our heart. But you know what? As men and women of God, salt and light, we apologize and we seek forgiveness. We don't hold the grudge and we do what we can, whatever we can, to reconcile with our brother and our sister. And even in the hard time, we know the scripture tells us that it's the hard times that actually grow us up. 
and make us into more Christ-like people for his kingdom. And so we don't get stuck in the past and we don't get stuck even in the present, but we seek to grow in Christ-likeness. You know, this world is dark and it needs salt and it needs light. Badly. Desperately. Oh, how I wish the people who hadn't heard these songs this morning could have really, could have, could have been here to hear them. Because it wasn't just the message of hope that it comes through and what it means to know Christ. You see, listen, salt is flavor. Salt is a preservative and salt is healing. It brings flavor to life. It makes life so much more joyful. Eating food without salt, ugh. Even when you're not allowed, you need something on there, right? If your diet says, eh, what's your salt? Salt tastes good. It preserves food. And, and salt, when, the, when Jesus spoke this, was also medicinal. It was a healing agent that was used. And he's saying that's who you are. You're people who bring flavor to life. You bring a joyousness to life, even in hard times. You bring a preservative to the culture around us. We're the culture that wants to fall apart and just go every which way. We're trying to preserve the rottenness from coming in by being godly people ourselves and bring healing to people's lives as we, as we preach the good news by the way we live and the words that we say and bring healing to life and the lives of those around us. Light. Light, well, that's an easy one. Without light, we fall all over the place. We trip on everything. But with light, we can see where we are. We see things as they are, and we're not going to stumble when we have light. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Would you say those with me? We're going to say them together. When you want, change it. You're going to say, I am. You ready? I am the salt of the earth. I am the light of the world. Jesus told us what this light and salt would look like in the life of of his followers. We're people who love. We're people who love, pray for, and do good, even to those who dislike and mistreat us. Wow, there's salt, there's light. We lend without expecting return. We're willing to sacrifice for others. We're willing to go the extra mile when we need to. Wow, there's light and salt. We're merciful and forgiving, even to the ungrateful and the wicked. Wow, there's salt, there's light. We have an attitude that's not judgmental or condemning. Why? Because we know we're, we're sinners saved by grace too. And we know when we see someone that's struggling, I'm not gonna judge and I'm not gonna condemn. What I'm gonna do is give them life and light and I'm gonna give them salt and I'm gonna help them up. That's salt and light in this world. We're people that help the people that are struggling. We don't condemn them. We don't judge them. We reach out to them. That's what Jesus did. And as salt and light, we realize that all people, all people, all people are valuable. All people matter to God. All people That includes you, and that includes me. And when people get a hold of the love of God and start to really understand how much they're loved by Him, they become salt, and they become light in the world. And we just pass it on to each other. Amen? That is the shortest sermon you will ever hear from this preacher.